We're gonna build a 12 volt battery that fits perfectly in a group 24 battery box that most RVs already have, that has enough kick to power this 2000 watt inverter that can run this pancake air compressor. You're watching Current Connected. Check out our website at www.currentconnected.com. Today we're going to be building a 12 volt, 170 amp hour battery bank using these four Enaramp EA170 batteries and this Deli Green 4S 12 volt, 200 amp smart BMS. We have some 3M VHB tape, uh, the BMS. We have bus bars to interconnect the battery. We also have some miscellaneous ring terminals as well as the leads that came with the battery management system. There are also some tools that we'll need. We have in this case for these batteries, a 10 millimeter deep well socket and quarter inch drive ratchet. If you can get a set of these that are insulated, that's even better. We have a set of wire strippers that we can use for the small gauge balance leads. We have a crimping tool, and this is what we're gonna to use to put the terminals on the balance leads. We also have a soldering iron and some solder, and that is if you can't get a good solid connection with the balance leads. Essentially, this is going to be cell one, cell two, cell three, and cell four. Now I have cell one negative here and positive here, but cell two has positive here and negative here. We're going to be placing bus bars between these cells like this, because this is a 3.2 volt cell. And when we put a 3.2 volt cell in series with another 3.2 volt cell, we have a 6.4 volt block. And when we put two of those blocks together, that's how we get our 12 volt battery. I've moved these cells off to the side so I have room to work here. I'm gonna take one of my cells and lay it face down on the table. I'm gonna take my VHB tape and put two strips on this battery, just like that. And this is important. These batteries have only a very thin plastic film on the outside and an aluminum case underneath that is also somewhat thin. The batteries can rub against each other and work their way through this film, essentially wearing through the shell and possibly causing leaks. So we've put this VHB tape here to secure the cells together. So now it is very important to make sure we get the right negative to positive configuration. So I have positive on this side and with this next cell, I'm going to put negative on that side, maintaining the same staggering configuration. Once this VHB tape is set, there is no going back. Now I'm gonna continue two more times for the next two cells. Now I've found after you get the first two cells placed down, it's actually easier to flip these cells up on their side and then you can slide them in place like that. And now they are stuck together. And then I'm gonna press firmly on this battery pack to make sure all of the VHB is secured together. And actually I'm gonna test how well this works. I'm gonna grab the first battery on the top and you can see the remaining three batteries hang off of there very nicely. Now paying attention to what we're doing, we're going to install the three bus bars for a 12 volt configuration. Now pay extra attention when you're doing this. If I were to move this bar over one place, it would create a dead short and blow up in my face. We may think we're ready to put the nuts on, but we aren't. We need to get the BMS ready to go. We're going to install these ring terminals. Now in a perfect world, I would be using the rings with the red bottom portion, but in this case, I couldn't find any of those with this size ring on them. So step one is we're going to strip back some of our wire. Now these wires are like 20 gauge wire, so I gotta go pretty small on my stripper, and I stripped way longer than I need to here, but that's okay. I'm gonna twist this wire a bit and fold it back on itself. 
That way it's a little bit thicker and this ring terminal has a little bit more material to bite onto. Now using my crimper, I can go ahead and squeeze down on here as hard as I can and that's gonna make a nice solid connection like so. We repeat that process on the remaining four terminals. For this next segment, we're going to be using 6040 rosin coarse solder. We like lead solder because it flows easily and we can easily put a dot of solder on the tip of this iron and apply the heat to this terminal and quickly add some solder to where the wires extend into the terminal. One thing to make sure of is that you don't apply all the solder to the tip of the iron, but more so bridge the heat over to the terminal and then add the solder to the terminal instead of the iron. And that should wet things out and look really nice just like that. Now that we've gotten all those terminals soldered up, putting things in order makes sense. So we're gonna start with the black wire and that is going to go on our main negative terminal with a nut. Now I'm not gonna to torque this down quite yet because we still need our power output wire. Then going down the terminal, I'm going to grab pin two, which is the first red wire, and that represents cell one positive, which we're going to connect right here. Next, we're going to grab the second red wire, which represents cell two positive, which in this case is pin three. And that is going to go on the positive terminal for the second cell. Repeat the process for the third red wire to cell three positive. And then the fourth red wire, which is pin five, our last wire, goes to the battery's main positive terminal. Now using our 10 millimeter socket and quarter inch drive ratchet, we can tighten down some of these terminals. I'm gonna tighten down everything except for the main positive and main negative terminals. Ideally, you would be using a torque wrench for this and meeting the torque specs of the batteries you are using. And we're gonna get a little bit of snug uh, tightening on the main terminals, but not too much. I wanna verify that I got all my connections correct. So the first thing I'm gonna do is connect my black lead to the battery's total negative terminal or pin one of this connector and check the voltage to pin two. If all goes well, I should have around 3.3 volts. I'm gonna continue checking all of these cells and if you have anything other than somewhere around 3.3 volts or you have a negative voltage, that means you've done something wrong. But in the case of this test, I've checked all four cells and that tells me I have this terminal connected on correctly. Once we've verified the voltages on this terminal, we can plug it into the BMS. Now, this BMS has a battery temperature sensor, and that is this little wire right here. It's also referred to as a NTC device. So there is a port here on the side of the BMS that says NTC, like I just mentioned. We can go ahead and plug that into that port. If you have any other cables, such as a USB monitoring cable, you're also gonna wanna plug that into its associated port. Now we're ready to get this connected to the battery. So I'm gonna bring this over to this side where the main negative terminal is. And this is why I said to keep things loose was so that we can put the B minus terminal on the negative pole of the battery. Now, as you can see, this BMS is a little awkward to have in here. So one trick I wanna show you guys is that you can disconnect this from here and there are four screws on either one of these terminals and we can take those out with a Phillips head screwdriver and flip around these P minus and B minus cables. This is pretty straightforward. Just remove the four screws, flip the cable over and reinstall the four screws. Now with these leads flipped around, things are a lot more manageable we can easily bring our B- minus over to this terminal and our balance leads are now long enough and we can add some zip ties and that sort of thing to keep things out of the way. So now we're going back to the connections. I'm going to put down the B- minus ring terminal and the balance lead that was the black one and then reinstall the nut, just like that. 
Now if you want, you can add some VHB tape to the back side of this BMS. There are two black metal strips and we can simply apply some VHB tape to there and stick this to the side of the battery and it rests nice and naturally there. And now we are good to go. To clean this up a little bit, I'm going to get the wires in here kind of grouped together and apply a small zip tie. So this battery is all cleaned up and ready to go. Now, if you were installing this battery somewhere like an RV, you may want a battery box or you may already have a battery box. Now, this battery box is designed for a Group 24 flooded lead acid battery, but conveniently, these NRAMP batteries will fit right into a Group 24 battery box perfectly. And you would just connect on your negative terminal here and your positive terminal here, and those are your outputs. This is the temperature sensor. And what this temperature sensor does is make sure that these batteries don't charge when freezing. Charging these batteries below freezing would damage them. So that can just be tucked into the side of this battery box. And if you want to use the USB monitor, you can plug this into your computer. For our video, I wanna show you how nicely this lid goes on. It's that easy, and now you have the power of a lithium iron phosphate battery, and you don't have to pay an arm and a leg because you built it yourself. A couple other nice things you may want to do is grab some of this packaging material that the batteries came with, and cut it to size, and install that between the batteries and the edge of the box, that way things don't move around on you. And there we go. If we don't want to use this USB monitor cable, we can just tuck it down here in the side next to the BMS. And it's simple as that. Now you just need to connect your negative terminal and your positive terminal, and you are good to go. Be sure to subscribe to the channel and turn on the bell icon for our next video, where we take four more of these NRAMP batteries and put them in a second battery box in parallel and build a two parallel four series battery bank that'll be able to output 340 amp hours of power at 12 volts. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a thumbs up and check out our store at store.currentconnected.com as well as the tutorials on our website at www.currentconnected.com.